In this video, I'm going to go over a review of the Massachusetts real estate market in 2022 and talk about my expectations for 2023. I'm also going to talk about some wild cards to be on the lookout for. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that sold more than a thousand houses and I'm one of the top real estate agents in the state. If you like hearing about Massachusetts real estate market, then make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button below because that's kind of our thing on this channel. Okay, it only makes sense to start this video, well, we're we started in 2022, which is basically completely opposite where we ended in 2022. It's January 1st, 2022, and it's one of the hottest sellers markets we have ever seen in our history. Interest rates were hovering around 3%. There was a record low amount of inventory on the market with sales records having just been broken in 2021. It was a seller's world. We were all just living in it. They were demanding crazy money and crazy terms for their houses, and you know what? They were getting it and more. If you are a first-time home buyer with a low lower down payment, then well, quite frankly, you were pretty much screwed. If you were a move up buyer or a move down buyer that needed to sell a house in order to buy that next one, then get ready for some misery. Frankly, the market sucks. I can't even begin to describe the misery for buyers. And while it was a great market for sellers, if those sellers had to buy a house, then they were about to go through some torture as well. All right, let's just jump into these numbers. Interest rates had just hit their lowest point in history in, in the high 2% range for a 30 year fixed rate mortgage before coming into 2022. Now, the rate increases had started as we started 2022 in the low 3% range. While the percentage increases was high, the increase in rates they really didn't slow down the market. In January, we sold 3,100 units in Massachusetts, and this is compared to 3,417 in 2021. Yes, sales were down, but that was because inventory was at its lowest point in history. We started the year with 2,148 single-family homes on the market in 2022, and that's compared to 3,071 that were on the market in 2021. That's a 30% decrease in the number of homes available to buyers. These levels were crazy low. And as I mentioned earlier, it was a miserable being a buyer in this market. There was a lot of pent up demand in the marketplace at this time. Finding a buyer, it was like fishing in a barrel, using dynamite, quite frankly. The story of 2022 is really all about interest rates. We would enter February with rates in the high to mid 3% range. But with the increase in interest rates, inventory was even lower and sales hit 2,200 units. Yes, this was down from the 2021 levels, but sales were again strained due to the inventory. We had a little PTSD just thinking about this right now. But by the beginning of March, we had crossed the 4% interest rate mark. To put this in perspective, buyers in the marketplace had now just lost 10% of their buying power in just two months. In other words, if they were pre-approved at $500,000, then their new buying power was 450 grand. The market still wasn't showing signs of slowing down though. We sold 2,875 units in March and started the month with 1,902 homes on the market. The market, it just continued to be resilient. And this is where things started to change. In the month of March, rates would jump from 4% to nearly 5% in that one month. Buyers lost another 10% of their buying power. The wheels have not fallen off yet, but a lot not on one of the wheels was loose and about to fall off. By the beginning of April, inventory was still down, but it was starting to ramp up. Sales came in at 3,243 units and the market was still very strong, but the interest rates were beginning to affect buyers. You had a buyer approved an amount for one week. By the next weekend, they had lost 3% of their buying power. In two weekends, they had been priced out of their original market and couldn't afford the houses they were originally looking at. I believe it was in April when the rates entered the 5% range that finally it had some psychological effect on home buyers. We hadn't seen levels this high since 2009. Four months in and the market, it's still hot. There's still a lot of pent up demand in the marketplace. Multiple offers and praying if you were a buyer were still the name of the game. Home prices were climbing at some pretty eye popping levels. May was a good month. We sold 4,067 units, but inventory was starting to climb. Most including agents had not noticed or felt this inventory climb, but it was in the first week of May that inventory levels actually surpassed the levels in 2021. In May, we'd see interest rates level off and stay in the 5.5% range. Now, this market stability was a lifeline to many sellers. It helped keep the demand up while the market started working through that pent up demand we talked about earlier. Sellers, they were still enjoying the party, but there was a feeling that that party well, was about to come to an end. And year over year, the average sales price was up 15% and then came June. This was the peak for our market in 2020. 22, which by the way, it's the peak seasonally. It generally comes in June. Interest rates would tick up slightly, but for the most part, interest rate stability was a beautiful thing. Inventory growth continued. And we 
we were more than 500 units above where we were in 2021. Unit sales would hit a peak at 5,509 units. Year over year, the average sales price retreated to a 10.5% increase. Now at this point, all the lug nuts have come off the wheel and that thing's just, just about to come off. It's just hanging on. This is the first half of the year. Things were glorious for sellers, but the lights to the party, they've been turned off. And July is the beginning of the party cleanup. July is the first month where we'd start to see the sales really fall off. Leading up to June, they were off the 2021 highs, but not by much. The number of sales fell by 16.2% in July. Rates actually dipped in the month in July, which I believe helped August sold numbers just a bit. Ultimately, the pent-up demand was starting to wane as these buyers that had been waiting to buy homes, well, they were buying them. Inventory would just continue to grow in July, hitting its peak actually at the end of the month. Now, this is also when we'd start to see our first month-over-month -month price decline in 2022. This pricing decline is completely normal. It's a seasonal trend. May and June are ultimately the best months of the year. Now, the month of August is when things started to get really interesting though. Sales were off, but saw a little bit of a bounce. And as I mentioned earlier, this would probably be contributed to those decreasing interest rates we saw in July. The month of August is when we'd start to see the interest rates make another run. Ultimately, in the month of August, they went up about three quarters of a point. Now, this is what would set us up for the fall market. The interesting thing about August, however, was that inventory, it stopped growing and actually started retreating a bit. I personally, I was shocked. I did not see this coming. And in hindsight being 2020, I can now say that I believe what was happening was that sellers, they just opted to hold onto the property rather than putting it on a market that's less favorable. This was the beginning of the seller side or the supply side being adjusting with that buyer side demand. Each time the demand side of the curve was reduced, the seller side would just simply meet it in lockstep. Again, I'm gonna admit it, I didn't foresee this happening. Again, looking back at it now, it kind of all makes sense. The sellers that didn't need to move, well, they didn't. And the would-be buyers out there that naturally would be ready to come to the market didn't because they were locked into their current home at such low interest rates. They ultimately decided to make that space work for them in the beginning. It might be a little bit more cramped or maybe they decided to put on an addition, but they're financially motivated to stay there. And that's the important part of all of this when trying to compare it to 2008. In the current state of the market, sellers do not need to move and they're being financially motivated to stay in their houses due to the lower interest rates. These site inventory levels are going to continue provided there isn't some big financial issue that puts people in the position of needing to sell their house due to maybe a loss of job and, and facing foreclosure. If rates continue to stay elevated, then I believe it will take years for this balance to change. You're going to see a large section of natural move up buyers stay put. It's just going to take those people that are started buying in the last six months. Ultimately, they're going to be the ones that have to move up in order to unfreeze the market. And that could be another four or five years. Now, the fall market was a month over month repeat of the number of sales continuing to decrease with continued month over month price decreases and continued interest rate hikes. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the month over month decrease, it's completely to be expected from June going into the fall market. The real phenomenon was the year over year pricing increase. Percentages actually started decreasing. We peaked in the year with a 14.98% year over year increase in May. And by the month of December, we're sitting at a 1.62% year over year increase. In other words, housing prices were in retreat in the back half of the year in 2022. Yes, housing prices for the year ended up 8.8%, but compare that to the 2021 amount of 14.8%. If the fall pricing retreat had not happened, then we would have seen another year with double digit appreciation. Also to say it another way, people who bought a house in the late spring market most likely lost some money and are in a house that's worth less than what they paid for. The late spring of 2022, that's going to go down as the peak of our now last market run up. Pricing would continue to go down in the fall until November when we'd see a little month over month increase. It would then retreat again in the month of December. Now we ended the year with a very fragile market in the state of Massachusetts. What do I mean by fragile? This market could easily break both ways. If interest rates went down fast and furious, then that would bring a surge of buyer demand. And as I mentioned, we currently have a very limited amount of supply of inventory on the market. Yes, this would bring more sellers to the market, but there would be a lag there. And frankly, we'd be right back to where we were in the early parts of 2022 and the end of 2021. That was a miserable and unsustainable market. Then there is if the market broke in the other way and there was a flood of inventory. I continue to try to figure out how this would happen in our market. We don't have an oversupply of new builds. We had little to no institutional buying with not a huge investor segment in our marketplace. So the only way that I could see a huge surge of properties is 
if there was a big economic event that triggers a wave of foreclosures. But even then, I see two problems with that. The first is that it's going to take time for those homes to be foreclosed on and then brought to the market, at least a year. Yes, it is true that you would see some distressed sellers come to the market in the form of a traditional sale because of the boatload of equity that these guys are sitting on. But I also kind of believe that if we saw an economic event, then the government would do something similar to what they did during the COVID years and put a stay on foreclosures. So where are we today? The real estate market, like I said, it's fragile. The jacking up of interest rates, well, it worked. It slowed down the market and put a, and hampered appreciation. We're currently in a world where houses are not appreciating, but not depreciating either, which by the way, that beats the pants off of what's happening in the stock and bond market this year. Inventory is strained and it's still well below those normal levels. Sales are down and they're going to be in the 2012 to 2014 range. I did a 2023 predictions video, which I have in the description as well as in the link above me. Here we talk about the predictions on interest rates, sales, prices, and as well as some of those wild cards. You should check it out. But to say the pricing prediction again, I don't see prices dropping any significant level. I believe that pricing, it's going to play a little hopscotch. One month it's going to be ahead and the other month it's going to fall behind. And this will continue until well, the dam is broken and either increased buyer demand happens, making it a hot market again, or big decrease in supply above that seasonal swing is going to create downward pressure on pricing. In the end, I personally believe housing will perform better than the stock market in 2023. Plus, it has this distinct advantage that you can live in it while decreasing your tax liability. I hope you found some value in this video. Whether you're moving in the next nine or 90 days, be sure to give me a call or shoot me an email. All of my contact information, it's in the description below. I'd love to meet you and get to know a little bit more about your situation, talk about your real estate goals. Let me know if you have any questions and until next time.